Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at geometric series. Um, now you'll remember back from Math 10 we talked about arithmetic sequences and arithmetic series and if you were asked what's the difference between a sequence and a series, you'd probably say something along the lines of, well I know with a series I'm going to take the sum of a bunch of terms and add them together. Uh, so if you have a geometric series, it's taking a geometric sequence, but instead of separating by them by commas, you're going to add each of those terms together. So an example of a geometric series is written right here, where it says 1, 5, 25, 125, uh, and so on. Uh, let's give an example of a second one. If you wanted to do something like, uh, how about 4 plus 12 plus 36 plus 108, uh, and it could keep going if you wanted it to. Okay, so uh, so a series is now finding the sum of a geometric sequence. Uh, now to take a look at the formula we're going to take a look at here today, um, it's a little bit more complicated and it's a little tougher to be able to prove than what the geometric sequence was and what we have for the following class. Um, so what I would recommend is we could talk about it in class as a class discussion, but what you could also do is you can uh, turn to page 26 of Mickelson and you'll be able to see a proper explanation of how to be able to derive the formula for a geometric series. Um, in terms of what we're going to do right here, uh, let's take a look at what uh, what we have. So you can, uh, if we wanted to create our formula, um, we're going to say this, a geometric series is s of n equals a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay, now the uh, terms are defined, you'll, you'll know what most of them are because they're the same as what they were from last class. A is going to represent our first term, n is going to represent the number of terms, r is going to represent the common ratio, and s is going to be our total sum, that's the part that's new. Okay, so once again, uh, we'll talk about it in class, but you can take a look on page 26 at Mickelson to see how he derives the formula. Um, okay, so now if we wanted to start to apply some of those examples, uh, let's see what we could have right here. Okay, so, uh, whoops, our first, first example, doo -doo -doo. There we go. Um, okay, it says find the sum of the geometric series 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, insert a few terms, and then plus 1,458. And so if we have something like that, ah, you know what? Again, it might be easier to almost figure out what those numbers are in between and be able to just add that up manually. Um, in fact, with this one here, that probably would be pretty quick and we might be able to add those terms up quite um, quite quickly without having to use a formula. Uh, but because we're trying to figure out how this all works, uh, we will we will take a look at the formula. So here's here's what we have. Um, if we wanted to do something where we know our formula s of n equals a 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, and you were to try to list out what each of the parameters are. We know that our first term is 2, we know that our common ratio is 3, but we don't know the number of terms, but we do know that our total sum, no, we don't know what our total sum is, uh, we don't know what our total sum is either. So we're, we're stuck here, we're trying to figure this out, and we don't have a lot of information to go with, because if we plug something in here, uh, we won't have... Um, anything to be able to tell us two of the unknowns, which means that we couldn't really proceed. So what I want you to do is I want you to think back to your geometric sequence formula. And we're just gonna go over here and we're gonna say this, T of N equals AR to the N minus one. And using this formula, we actually 
can do a little bit more because we know that our t of n, our last term, is 1,458. And if our common ratio is 3, our first term was 2, and we want to solve for n, we'd be able to do a little something more right now. And again, this isn't fantastic, but we could do a little something more. Um, take a look at something like this. So you could divide both sides by 2. Don't think that you could times the 2 and 3 by each other. But we could divide both sides by 2, and we would get 729 equals 3 to the n minus 1. And this part's going to be a little bit frustrating right now, uh, but if you were to look at this, you would say, well, I can't solve for n because n is an exponent. And actually, until later this year when we start learning logarithms, we're not going to be able to solve for n in this case because we can't solve for a variable that's an exponent. But if 729 and if 3 are related in some way where they could be written as common powers, then we might be able to solve for n in another way. Uh, so if you guess and tested and you said, well, what's 3 to the power of blank? Or what's 3 to the power of, let's say, well, if you said what's 3 to the power of 6, and you put that into your calculator, you would find out that 3 to the power of 6 is 729. And so you just have to guess around with a couple options. There's not too many different options on what it could be because it's going to be a nice, clean integer number. So we're going to say 3 to the power of 6 is the same as 7, 729. And that's going to be equal to 3 to the power of n minus 1. So in other words, n is going to have to equal 7. That's meaning that that's the seventh term in the sequence. But what that does tell us is if we go back to now our formula over here, we could plug a 7 in right there. And so uh, based off of that, that's going to help us out a whole lot because we could now say this. Um, S of 7 is going to equal 2 times 1 minus 3 to the power of 7 all over 1 minus 2, 1 minus 3, sorry. And if you take that and you put that into your calculator, um, and you should practice putting that into the calculator because it could be a little bit awkward. Uh, you might want to double bracket this just to make sure it looks good, or you could bracket that a little bit cleaner. Um, so if you have something like that, you're going to get an answer of 2,186. Okay, I'll show you a quick uh, calculator trick for something with this as well. So if you wanted to, uh, if, you're, if you're worried about the brackets, then what you could also do is um, if you have, let's see, if we go alpha y, okay, so make sure you have your calculator out, press alpha and then the y value, and then press enter, and it will create something where you already have a fraction. You'd be able to answer some things um, pretty efficiently from something like that. And so if you did that, you look back to what you had and you wanted to type in this, well, you could say, well, let's try that again. So you'd have 2 bracket 1 minus 3 to the power of 7. Go to the right, close the bracket. Go down here, I believe this is 1 minus 3. And if you do something like that, uh, you should be able to get your answer pretty quickly, uh, 2,186. And that should, uh, that should work out OK. So um, let's see what we have here. Uh, example number 2. Uh, find the sum of the first eight terms in the geometric series. 3, 6, 12, uh, and so on. Okay, so uh, probably this could even be our example one. This might be a little bit easier. Now let's go here. S of n, A, R, n. Let's write these out on the side. S of n equals A bracket 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. Okay, the first term is going to be 3. The common ratio is 2. We know that we have eight terms, but we don't know what our sum is. 
Okay, so this is uh, a straight plug and go at it. Uh, if we do this, we could say s of 8 is going to equal 3, 1 minus the common ratio of 2 to the power of 8, all over 1 minus the common ratio of 2. Put that in the calculator, and you're going to get a sum of 765. Okay, so hopefully that question was a little bit easier than, um, than what we had uh, from the first example. Okay, I want to take a look at the example number three. And when we take a look at this one right here, um, there's actually a way that you can enter this into the calculator as well. Uh, so take out your graphing calculator again. And let's clear this. Okay, so... Um, most of you, if you have a TID4+, plus, uh, will have a sigma button. Um, and so if you press math, go up, go up until you get to the summation part right here, you'll be able to get your sigma value right there. So press enter, and you can now just plug in almost exactly whatever it says. So have the question in front of you uh, for what we're taking a look at. And uh, we can refresh with what sigma means here. So sigma is uh, the, uh, the sigma value right there. The Greek symbol is telling us that um, we have a term that we're starting with, a term that we're ending with. They're giving us some sort of formula, and we should be able to plug this in. Um, now they're saying the first term uh, we're starting by subbing in a one and it doesn't matter if it says k equals one or x equals one if you go up oh whoops why did i say 11 there okay if you go up here and you put in a 10 and then you go to the right uh, we have well let's see what we got there we have three times negative two uh, and it's to the power of k, whoops, close bracket, to the power of x minus 1. Okay, and if you press this, we get negative 1,023. So everything works out okay. Um, let's go back to seeing what this says it is and uh and let's just make sure we know wh what we said as an answer we said it was negative 1023 uh but let's try and see if we can remember exactly what this means uh so this may look a little familiar from math 10. beginning at one this is what we start with we're going to start putting in values for k and we're going to stop once we put in the tenth value for k so you start by putting in a 1 for k, then you put in a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, dot, 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 all the way until you stop by putting in a 10 for k. I'm going to list out the first few terms, and we can see what happens when we sub in these terms. So if you take 1 and you put it in for k right here, you would get 3 times negative 2 to the 1 minus 1. That's going to be your first term. Our sigma value means that we're going to sum each of these additional terms. So we're going to add that to, well, what would happen if I put in the second term? And then what would happen if I put in the third term? Okay. And you're going to do that all the way until you put in the tenth term. And so if you do something like that and you look at your first term, um, well, we know one minus 1 is going to give us 0. So anything to the power of 0 here is going to give us uh, 1 times by 3. Our first term can simplify to say it's going to be the number 3. Then your second term is going to say, well, negative 2 to the power of 1 is negative 2. And negative 2 times 3 is going to give us negative 6. So I'm actually just going to change that. And I'll write subtract 6. And then over here, we would have negative 2 squared, which would give you positive 4. 4 times 3 is going to give you 12. And so what's the pattern that we see? Well, we seems that we have a common ratio of negative 2. 
and our first term is a 3. And in fact, what you'll find is if you have something here that's raised to the power of k or k minus 1, something with just a k in front of it um, as the exponent, then whatever this base is, is going to represent your common ratio. Um, and because it's in that form of actually tn equals a times r to the n minus 1, this 3 in this particular case here, because it's raised to the power of k minus 1 in your equation, that 3 is going to represent your first term. It's going to represent your a value. Um, but um, regardless now, if we have something like this, and you had your snarn, we should be able to find out a solution right from here. I'm just going to go, whoops. Uh, what would happen if you had your formula and you said uh, Sn whoops, equals um, a bracket 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r, and we sub in our values. We're trying to find the tenth, the sum of 10 terms, our first term is 3, our common ratio is negative 2. We're going to raise that to the power of n, and it's all over 1 minus the common ratio. Okay. Uh, just a couple algebra uh, things to think about right here. Uh, we know that uh, you should be able to do something here where you can add these guys. That would make a 3. And that would reduce with that 3 right there. But you can't touch this uh, because that negative 2 belongs to the power of 10. And so in your bed mass, you have to make sure that you take a look at that first. And if you plug all of that into your calculator, you do get a value of negative 1,023. So we are on the right track with, uh, with everything that we're looking for. OK, let's continue on. Let's take a look at example 4. Uh, whoops. Okay, uh, write the geometric series of something like this and express it using sigma. Uh, so if we wanted to say something with sigma, uh, we could write k equals 1 down here. They're asking us to. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So we're going to start by subbing in k is 1, and we're going to stop once we've subbed in k is 5. So you sub in 1 for k, 2 for k, 3 for k, 4 for k, 5 for k. And if you want to come up with a formula for it, probably let's take a look at something that you'd be in the form of Tn equals Ar to the n minus 1. Our a value is 6. Our common ratio is 3. And we're going to raise it to the power of, well, k, because we have a k value right here, minus 1. And let's look what would happen if you would sub in some values from that. If you plugged in a 1 for k right here, you would have an exponent that would be to the power of 0, which means you would only be left with this front value, this a value, which is a 6. So that would work out just fine. And then every time you start subbing in uh, a new integer for k, you're going to get something that would be, be multiplied by 3 because your uh, base right here is a 3, and as it gets increased as an exponent each time, it's going to get multiplied by 3. So if you put in a 2 for k, for instance, you would have something that would say 3 to the power of 1 times 6, which would give you 18, and that would be all good. So this would be our best and easiest way to be able to express uh, what they had is the series using sigma notation. And you can always, uh, you could always check it if you want. You could put it into the calculator, uh, but that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to take a look at a couple word problems right here, and uh, you'll get the, a real idea of how exponential growth uh, can really make numbers become very, very large very, very quickly. Uh, so here's a scenario. If you're paid one cent on the first day, two cents on the second day, four cents on the third day, eight cents on the fourth day, and so on, how much money will you have at the end of a 30-day month? And consequently also, how would that differ if it was a 31-day month? So uh, let's list out a couple of uh, 
of the terms in terms of what's uh, what's going on. So actually, you're making one cent and then two cents, four cents, eight cents, dot dot dot, and you're doing that for 30 terms. And so they're saying what would happen uh, to find out what s of 30 is. So when you go from one term to the next term, each time you're timesing it by two. You have a common ratio of two. And so using your formula, you say Sn equals A, one minus R to the N over one minus R. Let's see if we can fill in what we have. We want to know what's happening after 30 days when our first term is one cent, our common ratio is two, and we do that for 30 days. And remember, this is not finding out how much you're um, paid on the 30th day. This is saying how much have you collected in total on uh, for 30 days in total. So given something like this, we could say our A value, one cent, common ratio is two, raise it to the power of 30 over one minus a common ratio of two and put that into your calculator and I bet you're going to find that that is a pretty crazy number uh, from what you thought you might uh, otherwise be getting. Starting with just one cent, uh, you're going to have quite a bit by the end of the month. Uh, okay, so let's see what we have right here. Uh, we said we have one cent, 0. 0.1. Zero, 01 and we're going to times that by a common ratio of 2 and we're going to oh sorry no we're not we're going to actually let's do our ah let's do our fancy trick right here okay so uh taking a look at our our formula um we know that our first value is 1 cent And we're going to say, and then we can go 1 minus 2 to the power of 30. And then over here, we can say this is 1 minus 2. And what do you think? We are going to end up with, whew, what is this? $10 million. $10 million. What? Okay, so uh, 10 million seven hundred thirty-seven thousand four hundred eighteen dollars and twenty-three cents. Okay. Um, we would have 10 million. What was the answer here? Seven thirty-seven four eighteen. Okay, you would have that much after one month uh, if you made a deal with someone to be able to do that. So uh, that is a lot of sense. <laughs> um, okay, now how would that differ if it was a 31-day month? Um, well, let's see what would happen. Uh, let's actually go back here, and if you just go up top, and let's... Oops. Let's change this to a 31. And all of a sudden now you've doubled that amount of money and um, you would now have $21 million. So that is an unbelievable change in terms of something that would happen just by starting off with this super simple investment right here. So I won't write out the 31 day month total, uh, but if you want, you could just times that by two and you can see what you get. Um, okay, so um, final example here. 
this is kind of a strange question because um, I mean, here's here's our our real life application type question that isn't really a real life application too often. Uh, a basketball is dropped from a trunk from a height of five meters, um, but you do uh, have something like this where these types of questions uh, do show up uh, fairly often. Um, there's different types of scenarios with it, but something with a ball bouncing multiple times is something that you're going to see quite a bit. Uh, so basketballs draw from a truck with a height of five meters. Okay, so right here we're going to say that is five meters and it rises up four fifths of its height. And it's going to do that uh, and it wants to know what's going to happen after it hits the ground for an eighth time. So I'm just going to draw this out. Here's the first time, second time, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight like that. And the question says, find the total vertical distance that the ball will travel once it hits the ground, the moment it hits the ground for the eighth time. Uh, and it's a bit of a, a strange question. Um, there's multiple ways to be able to uh, take a look at this. Um, but um, here's, here's one way that we could possibly uh, look at this. Um, I'm going to look at this first term and I'm just going to put in a dotted line down here. This never occurred, but that makes every up bounce have an equal down bounce, meaning that when I go up here, I go back down. When I go up here, I go back down, and so on. Um, it would make this also have an up and a down bounce. And if you do that, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. And so what you could say is uh, using our formula, we could take a look at this and we could say something like this. Um, our first bounce is five meters. Our common ratio is going to be 0 0.8 or four fifths, 80% of the rise. Okay, the number of bounces we have is eight. The number of terms we have is eight and we wanna figure out what this is going to be. Now, when it refers to a vertical distance, that means you have to count the up bounce and you have to count the down bounce. And so when we do something like this and we say A is 5, we're only actually counting half of the total vertical distance. We're only counting the down bounces by saying something like that. So what we could do is we could say this. Our first term, A, is 5. Our common ratio is 0 0.8. We're going to raise that to the power of 8. But then from here, we need to times this by 2 because we have to count all of the up bounces that happened as well. So we're going to double our answer. And then from there, you're going to subtract 5 because that first bounce never had a double bounce. It didn't go up, it only went down. So we can't count that twice. Um, so this is one common way to be able to do the question. So you, you basically find the sum of eight terms, you times it by two, and then you subtract the first term to be able to see uh, what would have happened with something um, to make sure that you don't you don't count that first term twice. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to put this in the calculator here quickly. Whoops. Okay, so if you times it by two, subtract five, you should get to one decimal place, thirty-six point six meters. Okay, kind of a strange question. Uh, we could talk about that a little bit more in class too. Okay, that's it. Uh, here's your homework for uh, for the class. There's some tough word problems that we'll, uh, we'll be able to take a look at, uh, but there's some good questions uh, in there for sure. So uh, that's that's all for today. Thanks.